Cool, welcome guys to another uh, Tutorial Tuesday. Um, hopefully you've been enjoying the last two that we've published. Um, today's tutorial is a bit different. We're going to be exploring uh, 3D SketchUp. Um, you can download it, it's for free. You can download SketchUp Make. There's also an online platform where you can design. So it's a very awesome, powerful 3D software. And we're going to be exploring the software in the context of designing a point of sale unit. We're going to be utilizing a 2.2 millimeter thick bamboo material. And I'm actually going to use a real world uh, application here where I'm designing a bit of product storage for a client. So um, we're going to jump in and I'm going to show you pretty much my process and how I go about going from uh, a client's brief to actually designing a physical uh, point of sale unit that will go in a shop somewhere. So um, let's delve right in. Cool guys, so um, this is the SketchUp interface. Um, you'll see I've already pulled some images. Um, don't be alarmed if um, you need to pull in images. It's really a click and drag and drop kind of thing. So I literally just uh, dropped these in here already in preparation for this tutorial. Um, you'll notice on the left hand side, if you open up your SketchUp, you might not have as many tools as I have. So that's not a problem. It's just when you first open up, it comes with very basic tools. So you can just go to view and click on toolbars. And then uh, there's a box that says large tool set. Um, and you can play around. Maybe you want to use some of these other um, tools as well. Um, but for most of your applications, you can just click on large tool sets and that should be all good. So you can go ahead and click that. Also, if you're a first time SketchUp user, you might have an, an instructor box that keeps popping up showing you how to do stuff. That can be very helpful. Um, I myself um, obviously don't have that anymore because I um, don't need it. Um, but yeah, so let's get stuck in. You'll notice um, these are all your different tools. And on the right here, these are also different um, kind of tools, like entity info, that's um, basically info on the specific things that you click on within your workspace. Um, so like here, I clicked on that image, it's gonna give me some information about that. If I close that one, if I drop down materials, um, you know, these are just different materials, so I can uh, make different faces or different objects, different colors or different textures. Um, SketchUp has a multitude of different textures and we'll get to that later. Close that down, components. Components are really cool. Um, basically, components uh, components are basically just uh, um, already modeled up objects that you can put into your space. So if you're drawing a house and you don't feel like modeling up a chair, you can just dump a chair in there. You can also visit a website called 3D Warehouse, which is amazing. It's got tons of free 3D models. And um, styles, styles is really cool. Um, basically, it'll change, like it's almost a filter, like an Instagram filter. So styles are different filters to make your work look different. Um, and they're very handy and very useful, especially when you're trying to present. Um, in my case, it's very cool because I can make uh, certain designs look very appealing to different clients and really helps make the sell before actually making the actual product. Um, layers. Layers are cool if you're doing really intense 3D modeling work. So if you're designing a building, you can um, put the roof on one layer, the walls on one layer, the furniture on one layer, um, the outside on one layer, and basically it won't slow your computer down. Shadows. Um, shadows are very cool as well. They really add um, cool visuals to your, to your model. Um, you kind of only want to put those on once you are finished modeling and you just want the image, the, like the render if you will, because it will slow down your workspace um, a lot if you have the shadows on. Um, scenes, scenes are basically um, uh, just, you can save scenes and set scenes, so if you want to make a pan around your 3D model or your objects, um, you can do that. We won't really be touching on that, maybe we'll do a, another tutorial on that later. Um, uh, SketchUp's a really powerful tool guys, so there's a really lot, so a, a lot you can do with it, so we're probably not going to touch on everything, um, but I'm just going to take you through my process and we'll see what we can learn along the way. Um, so you'll notice these weird images, they might not make sense. So the first thing that I want to just say, you'll see me moving around the space, you might have already started to play. If you move your scroll wheel in and out, and by the way guys, on the bottom left hand side of my screen, it should uh, be showing you guys all my, my keystrokes and my, what my mouse is doing. But basically if you scroll in and out, um, that's to zoom in and out. If you, if you hold in your scroll wheel, you'll notice the little pan button comes up. So that's to pan around your space. And then those tools are up here as well. So, I'm sorry, not pan button, this is an orbit. So you'll be able to orbit around your space. You can orbit around, check it out. 
um, and then you'll see there's this hand is basically a pan. So that's to click and, and move your scene across without orbiting. Um, but one handy tool is that if you hold in your scroll wheel and you orbit and you hold in shift, it switches to a pan. So just play around with that and you'll get a, get a good handle on like how to um, navigate around your space. Um, you'll also notice these, these three colored lines, red, blue and green. Those are very helpful because those are your axes, so it'll help you along the way. Later on, I'm sure you guys will see how that is very helpful and how you can use your arrow keys to make sure that when you're wanting to draw a line on a specific axis, it will snap onto that axis and highlight a specific color. So yeah, that's quite a lot of information, so let's get stuck in. So basically, this is a client that we have that wants to basically, he's done a very, very primitive uh, drawing here to showcase kind of what he wants. He has these products, they like bamboo uh, toothbrushes and like a eco-friendly uh, toothpaste and he wants basically a storage container. So um, here's our measurements of the actual objects. So often when we're designing a product stand, I'll actually draw up the actual objects that they want to um, have um, in their storage display or their, not their storage display, their point of sale um, because then it's, a, it's very accurate. So when we actually make it, we know that there's enough space for each item. So he's basically displayed um, on the left hand side, you'll notice over here is like a channel for these toothbrush containers and then next to that he wants to have the actual toothbrush sitting in there and then he wants two channels for these two uh, tins to be able to like slot down there. So what we firstly what we're going to do is we're going to model up these things. So the toothbrush container is quite, the holder is quite simple. It's basically 28 mils in diameter. So what we're going to have to go and do. So one thing to note guys, I'm going to just teach you the fast way. Like you can click on all these tools and then create the action. But um, to increase your workflow, um, it's really great to learn keyboard shortcuts. So for circle, and it's pretty basic, most tools, it's just the first letter of what the tool is. So circle, I'm going to go ahead and push C. Um, and then I'm going to draw the circle. One thing to note guys about SketchUp is SketchUp can't actually draw curves. If I were to draw the circle, you'll notice that they're jagged. That means that there's no perfect curve lines in SketchUp. They're made out of little segments. Um, so that is good to know because it can often affect the way that your 3D model will look. So um, you'll notice there that it looks kind of broken, doesn't look like a great circle, but you'll notice if I if I push escape to, uh, I mean, sorry, if I push spacebar to get, exit out of that tool and go back into circle, in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a thing that says sides. So I can increase the amount of sides to make the circle look more like a circle. Um, so if I go and double that number and say 48 and push enter and draw that circle, it's already looking better. So if I go circle again, Sorry, if I go circle again and type out, say, what's double 48? That's 96. Type out 96 and draw my circle. Now it looks like a perfect circle, but if we zoom all the way in, they're actually a whole bunch of segments. So now that you know that, let's delve right in and start modeling some stuff. So the bamboo holder is 28 moles. So I'm going to go ahead and circle. Now you can see that the pencil tool is in the middle of the circle. So we need to in input the radius, not the diameter. So we have to halve 28, which is 14. So I'm going to click and drag and type out 14 millimeters. And we'll notice that that's actually very small. So um, what I might do is actually um, click and drag from right to left over these items, push the S button for scale and just drag these things a bit smaller, just so that it's a bit easier for my, for my circle. So, and then we know that the holder is 210 mils high, so this is a really cool tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and push P for pull, and basically this is like an extrusion tool, so I'm gonna click on it and lift up, and it's gonna start dragging. And we said that it's 210 millimeters. One thing to note guys is to also note that uh, we are working in millimeters in this tutorial. You'll notice here, um, if you would like to change your, um, uh, your units of measure, you can go, sorry not uh, preferences, you can go to model info and here under, under units, you can go ahead and um, change whatever you want to change here. Um, there's the format, you can go ahead and put feet, inches, whatever you want. And then it's also good to just um, increase the precision to three decimal points, just so that we're very, very accurate. Um, so go ahead and change that if you need to. Um, so yeah, so we've made this 210. 
So now, uh, what's important to do is to go ahead and select over that object, right click, and make a group. So the reason we make a group is so that um, nothing can interfere with that object, okay? So now that I've selected it, I can go ahead and push M for move, and uh, I can either click on the base of the object, you'll see a whole bunch of will flash, or I can just click in the negative space. It's better to actually just click the bottom of the base, so anywhere on there, I just wanna move it closer to our reference images. So, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and right click from right to left and scale down again just to make it easier while we model so so i've scaled that down so there is the toothbrush holder so in terms of the toothbrush itself we've got 25 by 15 so i'm going to go ahead and push r for rectangle click and drag um, and by the way when i click and drag i'm not holding in the right at the left click i'm just clicking and then dragging so now i'm going to type out uh, 25 uh, by 15 and hit enter and then I'm going to push my P tool for pull and I'll pull up by 195 meters. enter I'm going to click and drag over that from left to right it's interesting to note that if you click from left to right um, it will only select the object if you've highlighted completely over that area but with the right to left, anything it touches, it will select. Just so you guys know that. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click, make a group. Okay, that's great. And then as for the tins, the tins are 58 by 22 millimeters. We're gonna push our circle tool. Half of 58 is 25 plus four is 29. So we're gonna hit type out 29, enter. Push tool, 22 millimeters, enter. And we're gonna click and drag over it, right click, make a group. Cool, so now we know that uh, we want to two of those, so we can go ahead and duplicate this. So I can I can go old school and control C, control V, and paste another one. Another cool option is to actually select that option, push the move tool, and if you hold in control, you'll see there's a little plus icon that pops up. So if I click and move while holding in the control on the move tool, it'll make another one. Um, so that's very handy. So now that we have all of our objects, we can go ahead and start uh, designing our point of sale unit. So basically, we know that the actual travel case is 28 millimeters, and the client's brief, he specified. Okay, so we know the travel case is 28 millimeters. So I think we'll go ahead and make that hole 30, just to give two moles of breathing room. So we'll go ahead and grab our circle tool We'll type out 15. And then we won't make a group this time because we're still busy creating the entire object. Um, but if I push M, you'll notice that if I hover, if I hover on the edge of the circle, it'll want to snap to the center. And that's very handy because then I can select this object and move it or duplicate it from the center out, which is very handy. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select the object, push the M tool, snap it to the middle and now I've clicked and now I can move it. Now remember I said if I hold in control it will duplicate it. So I'm going to hold in control, move it up. So now if I move it exactly 30 it's going to be edge to edge which I don't want. I need there to be some breathing room. So I think I'm going to make a six mil breathing room gap between each holder. So I'm going to go and type out 36 and enter and then I'm happy with that. And then I think he wanted 10 units. Yeah, he wants to be able to sort 10. So now what's really cool is I'm gonna go ahead and do that same um, movement again, but now with only this circle selected, I'm gonna push the M tool for move, and I'm gonna go onto this circle on the middle there, and I'm gonna go hold and control, and slide up, and then basically go into the center of the next circle. And then what's cool is without, if I haven't completed any other action after doing that action, I can go ahead and push star, which is the asterisk on your keypad or your number pad. I'll go star and you'll see it pop up in the right hand, um, the right hand box over here. Um, and star basically means multiply. So I can go ahead and say multiply by eight. Oops, that did not work. Let's try it again. So I'm gonna duplicate that. And then we go times eight. Enter, there we go, perfect. 
and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And there we have the, um, the slots. So now we actually need to draw the rectangular parts. So we're going to go ahead and use the, the line tool. So we're going to push L for, L, L for line. And uh, I'm basically hovering over the center point so that I can go from the center outwards. And I'm going to click on the edge of this um, circle and I'm going to type out six moles because um, that's the border that we're going to do. So I'm gonna, and now you can see it snapped to red and we spoke about those axes. If I go up, okay, green, that's actually going along that plane, that axis. If I go up, it's a blue axis and if I go red, it should snap on a red. And you'll see if you hold and shift, it'll actually lock onto that axis that you're on, um, which is very helpful. So I'm gonna go over to red, I'm gonna lock onto the axis and then I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna go to the edge of this Actually, we can't do that. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go, now that we've got that diameter, we're gonna go into the center of the circle again, and go to the edge, six. Then come up. Okay. Um, and then we can delete those lines later. But we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So snap into the middle, move outwards to the edge. Sometimes it's helpful to actually just click in the center instead of hovering in. So we're going to hover, there we've locked onto the green. Locked onto the red. And basically all we're after is this um, six moles don't forget to hold in your scroll wheel and put your hand and we want to get six moles this way and now we can go ahead and type R for our rectangle tool and then we have a perfect rectangle and now we're going to go ahead and push the E for erase tool I'm going to click and basically erase, similar to paint actually. Um, and then one thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and delete the inside of these circles. So these, this is basically what's called a face. So you guys want to delete the inside of the circle faces. Okay, so that's done now. And we can select that whole thing and we can say, make a group. I'm gonna draw that over there. Okay. The next thing that we're gonna do is um, the side partitions. So basically the dividers, it's gonna divide all the different partitions. So we're gonna go ahead and off the back of this partition here, I'm gonna push the up arrow to lock on the blue axis, which is up and down. And I'm gonna drop, draw down, um, let's say, 30 moles. Then I'm gonna come this way. And then that's fine. And now remember, we are working with a 2.2 millimeter thick material. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, push that uh, P for pull tool. Click and pull out, I'm gonna type two comma two millimeters and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make that a group that's great so at the moment I'm just dividing it and we can work on the actual design kind of side and um, we can go ahead and click on this um, div this uh, slot as well and make it 2.2 millimeters and then basically, you'll notice there guys, when I'm entering into a group, you double click to enter the group and it's cool because I can only edit this component. Like I can't edit that piece, but when I click out of the group, it'll exit. So once I click in this negative space here, it exits the group. So you double click to enter a group to edit the, the component. So the next part, and uh, which is this toothbrush holder, this um, toothbrush holder, 
is I'm gonna head and select and move it. And you'll notice I've gripped it on the bottom corner there. And now I can move to this corner and put the toothbrush right there. And then I can select this divider, push the move tool, hold and control to copy it and slide it across. Now this is a very tight fit so we need to kind of account for tolerances because some of the boxes might be a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. So what, what I might do is just select that divider, click on that bottom right corner, make sure it's sliding on the one axis and I think I'm just going to give it a one millimeter tolerance. And then I think that's perfect. And then the tins we know are 58 millimeters in diameter. So we can basically basically select this arm, push the move tool, hold and control so we can duplicate it. I'm gonna move it right next door. And then I'm gonna click that corner, move it across 58 millimeters. But again, we talked about our tolerance. So we're gonna go ahead and actually type out 60 to give it a bit of a tolerance. And now that we know that we want two of these, so I'm gonna hold and click on that bottom corner and put it on that corner, and then we've got the exact, uh, the exact same um, channel. So um, you'll notice if I push the M tool once I've selected this group, if I hover over these X's, it wants to like, show a protractor. Um, this is basically to rotate your object, which we're gonna do now, except we wanna rotate on this side. So I'm gonna click on it, and I'm gonna move it, and you'll see the angles there on the side. So I'm gonna type out 90, because that's the angle that I want. And then I'm going to move it into place. In the bottom of the center there. And then often what we do, guys, in SketchUp is you draw lines for guides. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line across here, just so that I can get the center line. So I'm gonna go down, and that's the center there, and then put this item right there, and I know it's perfectly centered. And then we're going to go ahead and duplicate these. And let's go ahead and say times nine. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's ten units in there. So the client, I'm not sure if he specified how many he wants in there. He didn't. So in order for this um, point of sale unit to look really nice, we're going to probably design for the like the most um, units so that the entire unit looks full. So I've just selected from right to left, which basically means it's gonna select anything that that box, boundary box touches. And then I'm gonna push Control and M to duplicate and add four extra more. And then I think we can add two more of these turns in the back here. Yeah, that seems fine. Okay. So now we know everything fits nicely and we can work out how many boxes of these we can also fit in there. We times that by 10, okay, times it by 20, times it by 22, times it by 23. Yeah, so you can actually fit 23 of those toothbrushes in. So, um, so that's great. So now in terms of the actual design aspect, we know that um, uh, we can also try and move this. If we hover over to the middle here, move to the center there. We can go ahead and uh, click on the center of the bottom of this object. And then if we hover on this, this circle of the slot, um, you can see it's also trying to show us the center point there. So go ahead and click that and there you go. It's in center now. And then we can go ahead and click the bottom there, push the up arrow to lock on the blue axis hover to the bottom corner over here as a reference point to where we want it to anchor to and I can go ahead and click and now that is in there so that fits perfectly so in order for the storage unit to work um, it's not really going to hold the product very well at such a low level so what we need to do is design this point of sale unit so that the stand can um, basically be higher for the longer items that are being stored so what I might do is I'm going to click on here Push my pull, click on my pull tool. I'm gonna to pull this up to about let's say um, let's say 100. And what I might even do further is actually keep this bottom layer and add another one at the top, so that it actually has two different uh, slots to hold it in place. 
And then I'm going to double click this divider, click my pull tool, and I can click and actually hover the reference height of this other one. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Pull tool, click and drag up. And in terms of the dividers, um, it seems that we're already kind of halfway up. What I might do is, um, actually I think that height's fine. We'll leave it at that height. Maybe we'll drag it up by 10 mils, I think. 10. Now oh, that looks good. Double click the other layer and pull that up to the same height. And that looks good. So um, there's obviously a lot of editing that we still need to do in order for this stand to work. Um, we need to figure out how does um, this piece actually slot into here. Um, so let's go ahead and try and figure out how that's going to work. Um, we obviously want to design it as smart as possible. So there's a lot to, to crunch here guys, so um, I think let's maybe leave the tutorial there and uh, we'll make a second part of the tutorial going forward. Um, but yeah, there's a lot to learn here. So we've learned a lot of different tools, we've learned how to group things, we've learned how to use the line tool, we've learned how to use the rectangular tool, the circle tool, and the push-pull tool. Um, so yeah, so we've pretty much got like a lot of our design done. Um, we're going to obviously have like a backing board um, with the company logo on for the client as well. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's leave it there guys and uh, stay tuned for the next part of this tutorial. Cool guys, as always, thanks so much for watching. Please keep a careful eye on our channels for any cool new and interesting videos. Um, we really want to make sure that we post every single Tuesday and drop a tutorial for you guys. Um, please also comment if you have any questions or anything that you'd like to see a tutorial on with regards to uh, any open source design programs and also keep an eye out for our Good Morning Brew series which we're hopefully going to be launching this Friday um, or actually I think it's next Friday. Um, so stay tuned, a lot of exciting things happening on our channel and I just wanted to give you guys a big thanks. Um, we see, we've received quite an uptake in subscribers as well as um, a, a lot of watch time. So we just want to say thanks to the community that's already watching our videos and stay tuned for a lot more exciting stuff. Thanks guys.